Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear exclusive interviews, game highlights, along with thoughts and comments from King James Radio Network founder Corbett Thompson, including rants about his beloved New York Mets. Hey guys, Corbett Thompson here for the King James Radio Network at jamesisking.com as we do our North Brunswick Raiders softball midseason report. You know, this is kind of an offset of our Raiders, Raiders Rewind programs that we used to do you know, back in the early days of the King James Radio Network. So trying to do a little bit of that uh, this, time, this time around. You know, this is exclusively for the YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, you know, if you want to see or hear, in our cases, this being radio, uh, hear a lot of these, you can, uh, you know, click the subscribe button uh, on our YouTube channel and uh, catch us whenever you can. But with that being said, um, this is our midseason report for Lady Raiders softball, where, you know, the North Brunswick Lady Raiders softball team here in New Jersey, that uh, this is our seventh season of Lady Raiders softball on the King James Radio Network. And, um, you know, it's been an interesting year, to say the least, especially this last week, which was a very rough week for the Lady Raiders in terms of the one loss record. It, you know, one in four the, this week in the five games that they played, including a doubleheader at the time of this recording, a doubleheader yesterday over at First Colonia and then at JFK, where the Lady Raiders lost both games. They lost both games by one run and also lost both games in the other team's final at bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. So very tough way to, to lose a doubleheader. It's one thing if you get blown out of a game or blown out of a couple of games. It's another thing to lose in the other team's final at bat on the road and, and so forth. And, and so the Lady Raiders, you know, right now, because of the fact that they have lost four straight games here, you know, after starting off at six and three, now four straight losses. So now they are a game under the 500 mark at six and seven through their first 13 games. And if you told me when I did this report, when I did our uh, preview, when I did our season preview, which you can also see on this page, on our YouTube page, if you had told me before the season, when I did my season preview that, you know, the Lady Raiders would be six and seven after 13 games, I wouldn't have believed you. Simple as that. I thought this team had, you know, too much of a, of a good lineup and uh, too much of, you know, solid defense to let that happen. And the four losses in a row that they've had have come against, you know, JFK, Colonia, um, well, uh, not in that order, but I'm uh, not in uh, chronological order, but you know, JFK, uh, Colonia, you know, also uh, losing uh, recently to Spotswood and then you know, JFK again. If I do it in chronological order, it would be JFK, Spotswood, Colonia, JFK in chronological order. So, um, you know, unfortunately for North Brunswick, I think the pitching, you know, while the pitching is still, you know, been inconsistent at times, I think the pitching overall has been better than, you know, last year. Um, so between the three pitchers that they have, Tara Jennings, Mia Colon, and Lauren Duffy, I think overall, as a general rule, the pitching has been better, but there are still those times where those inconsistencies will creep up and bite them, you know, and bite North Brunswick. So you saw that in the doubleheader yesterday where, you know, Mia Colon in the, in the second game of the doubleheader, which was against JFK, Mia Colon goes six innings. And, you know, the head coach, Mary Rossi, wants to turn it over to Lauren Duffy to try to get the final three outs. And Duffy is basically the closest thing to a strikeout pitcher that the Lady Raiders have. And, you know, so you turn it over to Duffy thinking, that, you know, okay, you're going to get some strikeouts here. Maybe because the tough part of the order was coming up. And so you figure maybe you didn't want JFK seeing Cologne, you know, third time around the batting order. So... You go to Duffy there, a fresh arm, uh, you know, again, the closest thing to a power arm that the Lady Raiders have. And Duffy has, actually has 9.1 strikeouts per seven innings. And so you figure maybe you get a couple of strikeouts, to, you know, to the middle of the order there and get yourself through the seventh inning and win the game. But it just didn't work out. You know, Lauren ended up walking a couple of people and the inning snowballed where Coach Rossi tried to put Mia Cologne back in to re-enter the game as the pitcher. By then, it was a little bit too late. The floodgates were opened and JFK was able to take advantage and score two runs in the bottom of the seventh to win the game 
four to three. The Lady Raiders lost both games yesterday, four to three. And again, in the final, you know, in the seventh inning, in the other team's final at bat. So maybe I'll talk a little, expound a little bit more uh, about that in our next Lady Raiders softball broadcast, which will be on Friday. Uh, it'll be on Senior Day, May 3rd, Senior Day. Uh, we will be on the air again with the Lady Raiders when they take on Colonia uh, at Raiders Field for Senior Day. But, um, you know, now they do have a home game on Wednesday against Perth Amboy. Uh, I will be with the baseball team uh, against Woodbridge, and you'll hear more about the baseball team in my baseball report. But, uh, you know, with that being said, up until this week, it was a good first half of the year for the Lady Raiders. They were 6-3. and three. You know, they had gotten some hits. They were averaging over 8.8 .8 runs per game. So, you know, North Brunswick was clicking for the most part. I mean, yeah, there were some defensive lapses in there, and yeah, again, the pitching wasn't always consistent and that type of thing, but they were 6-3, and three, and so you take it. And, you know, beating Carteret twice, uh, the second time a little bit, you know, quite you know easier than the first time they played Carteret. They had to go to extra innings against Carteret the first time. But, you know, it, you, the ebb and flows of the of ebbs and flows of the season you know, can do that for you. Um, Carteret didn't look like the same team the second time around that they did the the first time when the Lady Raiders went to Carteret, you know. But obviously, some very you know tough games against South Plainfield. Um, the the two games that they had against South Plainfield, uh, they had a lead in the first game and fought South Plainfield you know a little bit more tooth and nail in the second game. And both of those games getting away, South Plainfield beating the Lady Raiders in South Plainfield's final at bat with uh, Joe Holoboski driving in the winning run. Her, she had three RBIs that day. Um, and I believe that was also a 4-3 game, if I'm not mistaken. I, I have it here in front of me. Um, the way South Plainfield won that game. Let me see. I'll find it. Yeah, 4-3. <laughs> so that's the third game. You know, so the Lady Raiders have lost three games this year by a score of 4-3. And overall, North Brunswick is 0-4 in one run games this year. 0 and 4 including that you know those three games I mentioned, South Plainfield, JFK and Colonia. Let's see the other one run loss would be I'll find it here in just a second. The other one run loss that they lost to Spotswood by 2. So I'm not counting that one. The other one run loss, let's see, JFK, Colonia, JFK and South Plainfield. So those are the four. Yeah. So Four one-run losses for the Lady Raiders, so they could just as easily, you know, be uh, ten and three right now instead of six and seven if those games turn the other way. But you don't want to play the what-if game that doesn't really get you anywhere in terms of the rest of the season. Now, the Lady Raiders, we are more than halfway through the season, even though this is the mid-season report. We are more than halfway through the season. Uh, the Lady Raiders have, let's see, they have. I want to say they have three games left. Let me double check that. They have, yeah, yeah, they have three games left in the regular season. Perth Amboy coming up. So Perth Amboy, that's a game they should win. Perth Amboy is 0-11. They haven't won a game yet this year. So, and the Lady Raiders beat them handily the last time. So Perth Amboy coming up. And then they got to go to Woodbridge for a night game. It's a 6 o'clock game at Woodbridge. And um, I should mention, we should, we'll probably be there for that game, too, on Wednesday. Um, so I, I said Friday was our next. I think Wednesday will be our next Lady Raiders softball broadcast, unless something weird happens with the weather. N yeah, Wednesday will be our next Lady Raiders softball broadcast, where we will be at Woodbridge and then Colonia for Senior Day. But just individually, Adriana Barnes, you know, has really had a big year for North Brunswick this year. 19 RBIs so far in the season through the first 13 games. Three homers, 19 RBIs for the Lady Raiders. And um, so Barnes, you know, has really uh, made an impact in, offensively uh, for this North Brunswick team. And right now, you know, moved. she's been moved around a little bit, you know, in the infield or in the, in the field as far as, you know, she spent some time behind the plate, spent some time in the outfield, even played some third base. So, you know, Mary Rossi is still trying to figure where every, you know, where everybody's best spot is, being a first-year head coach. But um, Barnes has really uh, done well, as you know, in terms of offensively hitting at 341 this year, you know, for the Lady Raiders. So that's a plus. Um, Kayla Shear, who is you know one of the senior captains, four-year starter for the Lady Raiders, hitting at 356 on the year right now with five RBIs. You want you're looking to see the power, you know, the the that that power swing from Kayla. You still. You know, you want to see that happen before the year is out. Now, I know, you know, one of her goals is to reach 100 career hits. She's currently at 88. 
and the Lady Raiders only have a handful of games left if you include the GMC tournament and the state playoffs. So unless Kayla can really get on a roll these last few games, you know, that part is going to be tough. But, you know, we'll see what happens. That's why they play the games, as they say. But you know who's had, just in terms of hitting, I'm not talking about run production or anything like that, but just in terms of hitting, who's had the best year? That would be Tara Jennings. Tara's got 17 hits, and, you know, she's got six runs batted in. She's hitting 447, and she's got 17 hits with six walks for the Lady Raiders. So Tara has been consistently, you know, and so has Mia Santiago, just been consistently one for three or one for four or whatever. And, you know, so Tara is having a good year at the plate. Maybe part of that is now that she's not having to pitch every single inning in the circle. Now that you have a Lauren Duffy and a Mia Colon to go side by side with you, that now maybe Tara, you know, that kind of gives her a little bit of extra, you know, to, at the plate as well. You know, that, 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 you know, all that pitching is not taking, you know, the energy from her and she's able to, you know, get some good swings in at the plate and get some hits. So, you know, Tara definitely having a career year at the plate right now for the Lady Raiders again with those 17 hits. And Mia Santiago, Mia, she's just Miss Clutch. You know, I don't think there's any situation that really, that really rattles her. And especially with a lot of what she's been through uh, just in this last year or so alone. Uh, Mia, you know, unfortunately has lost both of her parents. So I think just that, that mental toughness that you have to have to, when something like that happens to you, um, that mental toughness that you have to have to go through that and to, you know, to be able to come out and play softball probably is, you know, like child's play for Mia because of what she's gone through and losing her parents. And, you know, so it's a big, uh, you know, credit to her that she's able to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, let me see. Let's see if I focus on anyone else here. I'm only going to spend another minute here. But, you know, we talked about the pitching a little bit. The defense at times just hasn't, you know, defense let North Brunswick down. Uh, certainly in that game against Colonia at the end. Um, it's let North Brunswick down at other times this year. So you know, defensively, um, now I think the Lady Raiders have played better defensively, let's say these last five, six games as opposed to the beginning of the year. But that being said, it just seems like things just happen at the wrong time, whether it's the pitching, whether it's the defense, or whether the offense just can't score runs. The offense has only scored 12 runs in the last three games. Now, remember, I told you they average – um, they've been averaging coming into this last week. They had averaged more than eight runs per game. And so they've been held to 12 runs in these last four games, which is three per game. And, uh, you know, so that's prob a little bit problematic in that, you know, they're not totally ineffective, but they're just not being, uh, you know, consistent enough to put enough runs on the board. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And I said at the beginning of the year, I, say, I said I think the Lady Raiders are going to have to win games by a score of 7-5, to 8-6, to 9-7 to seven like they did against Carteret this year. They're going to have to win those high-scoring games, you know, to get wins on the board. So that's where we're at. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, that being said, um, you know, that's pretty much it. And I'll get to some other stuff during our next broadcast at Woodbridge on Wednesday, which is a 6 o'clock game. So they'll be playing under the lights at Woodbridge. So I uh, thank you guys for listening in. Thanks to uh, head coach Mary Rossi for uh, this little number right here. I don't wear too many uh, collared shirts, but uh, this is one of them. Uh, so my thanks to Coach Rossi here for this. And so very much appreciate it. Um, so until Wednesday for our next softball broadcast, Corbett Thompson saying goodbye. Godspeed. Thank you guys for listening and watching in. And I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.